You seem awfully chipper, Velvet. I'm fine. And I guess I have you to thank as well. Perhaps. But gratitude doesn't suit you. Now, say ah. Uh. Huh? I need to see your teeth! I made a hundred gold bet that you break, remember? So, I need to see if you've broken anything. Let's start with those teeth. Help us out, kiddo. All right. I just need to check our front teeth, right? Front teeth, canines, whatever. Just get in there and take a good hard look. You didn't mean that literally, did you? Why are you making me do the checking? Acting the innocent maiden, are we? Well, I suppose that some say that showing the inside of your mouth can be more personal than being seen naked. What? Seriously? Mogilu, you're only making this even more awkward. Come now, will you cooperate or not? We can't settle the bet until we know the tooth! Fine, but let's check the ones in my left hand first. Good, I believe Bienfu can assist with that. Why me? Leave me out of this! Bien! She's squeezing me! Ouch! Those fangs hurt! <laughs> Looks like Velvet is just fine. Yeah, the sparks returned to her eyes. But, uh, is showing the inside of your mouth really that embarrassing? What? Keep your intrusive questions to yourself! The size of the art that created this place. Just what is the Abbey planning to use it for? Whatever it is, they're trying hard to keep it hidden. It can't be anything good. Was that kid anyway? He and I used to be tethered to an exorcist named Lady Teresa. He was number one, I was number two. Oh, -ho, a friend of yours then. So he went feral after that Teresa lady fell. Yeah. I found Velvet and the others, but he probably had nowhere to go. A stray Moloch stripped of his free will won't go much further than a demon's belly. Anyway, seems like the only people I run into these days are kids. I'm more in the market for an unattached woman with a pretty face. Um, sorry? <laughs> I'm just fooling around. Grow a sense of humor, kid. Anyway, relax. I'll keep an eye on him until he's in command of himself again, alright? Just one more reason to bring the Abbey down. Right. Thanks, Savid. Luffy said, can you think of a good name for the kid? You're giving number one a name? Yeah, he says he can't remember his true name and calling him by a number seems mean, you know? Yeah, I was really happy when Velvet gave me my name. Hey, I've got this. How about Hajime? It means the first, and he's number one, right? In that case, why not just go with Ichiro? No way, that was Shigure's childhood name. Why should that matter to us? It should be softer. How about Ichi? Or maybe... something like Numbi? Numbi? Where'd that one come from? It's like number, but, uh, more cute. Let's just forget that one. 
I don't think we should reference his old number at all. Um, how about Bob? Uh, is that just because of his hairstyle? That's really reaching. Actually, I kind of like it. If it's too plain, how about Bobby? Hmm, that isn't bad. Right? Then number one is hereby renamed... Stop it, you two! You don't understand it at all! A boy doesn't want a name that sounds cute! You... you don't think so? That was quite an outburst. <laughs> the kid has a point. We need something with more panache. How about Silva? Silva? His hair and pendant are both silver. I like it. It's got a certain mystique about it. Silva. Yeah, it sounds cool. Well, if his old buddy Laffy said approves, then Silva it is. Well done, first mate. Praise from you is wasted on me. Huh. <laughs> then consider it praise from Silva instead. Right. Time to go give him the good news. Hey! The Moloch formerly known as Number One. You've got a new name. I'm glad he got a good name. Maybe we should have put a little more thought into naming you, too. That's all right. You need to steer your own ship. Right, Aizen? You're the one who taught me that. <laughs> you know just what to say, don't you? Moloch formerly known as Number Two. <laughs> Magilu, what were you up to while we were lost in the Earth Pulse? I was ringing the bell. The rift was open the whole time. Couldn't you hear me? I don't remember hearing any bells. She was fighting with Lord Melchior. She really gave it her all. Bianfu, don't give him the wrong impression. But you endured so much. It was... it was so moving. Yes, yes, I did endure. It was so hard not to laugh. Did the old man tell you a joke or something? It was a staring contest, and oh, the faces that old man can make. I kept picturing him as a young man, but with that same wrinkled face, and it was so hard not to crack. <laughs> I needed to keep myself in check. My desire to laugh was only broken by the ringing of the bell. Clang! Crash! What a thrill! Wait, was that the only thing that broke Mogilu? Are you asking if he broke my heart? Like I'm fishing for sympathy? That's not what I meant at all! You stood watch over the Earth Pulse Rift for us. I didn't say that. Stop trying to give me a participation medal. Just take it. After all, you don't care either way, right? True that. It looks like it's been captured. Just like the Therians. But why would they hold a dragon captive? Hmm. An art connects this place to the Earth Pulse. That's probably why we were taken here. Earth Pulse. So it's got something to do with the Nominat? That would be the obvious conclusion. I don't get it. Explain. Small words. Very well. You're part of all this, too. Velvet. I'm fine now. I promise. All right. I see. You found out Inominat's true identity. So, now that you know, can you still fight him? It's only given me more reason to kill him. And the Shepherd. You're one ice-cold girl. There's still one thing bothering me. Inominat needs to eat malevolence to awaken. Once he does, he'll use his power to suppress negative emotions. But when humans can't create any more malevolence, what will happen to Inominat? He'll run out of things to eat. And maybe die? Hmm. Wouldn't he just go back to sleep? But if he does, then his power will fade and humanity will start creating malevolence again, right? In order for Inominat to eternally suppress negative emotions... He needs an infinite, powerful source of malevolence to feed off of. For example, that produced by an immortal dragon. 
which would make this place a sort of dragon farm, created so he could control humanity forever. You can't be serious! Just speculation, but it all makes sense. They can't think of Malakim as anything but tools. Just how much will they sacrifice for their ideal world of tranquility? We don't dare free it. It'd be too dangerous. I know. Damn the Abbey and their twisted morality. <sighs> what was it that I believed in all that time? The image I'd built of the Abbey is crumbling from the bottom up. Please cheer up, Madame Eleanor! You'll make me depressed too! Is this about the dragon farm? Yes. I strongly doubt even the Abbey has the power to manipulate dragons so freely. Then that dragon... Wasn't a dragon before it came here? That's the natural assumption. They probably brought the Malakir as a captive, then turned him into a dragon. Just like Melchior did, eh? Is there no line they won't cross? I don't know what to say. It's not your fault, Madame Eleanor! But spawning dragons in addition to Therians... Do you think they'll figure out a way to make humans, too? Yes. Wait, that's awful! I can't believe you went there!
I'll cut down anyone in my way! Velvet? What is it? I was once your sister's child, right? Then my father is... Look, you were reborn, right? Yeah. Honestly, I really don't know anything about how being reborn works. But to me, what you see, what you hear, and what you feel, that's what's important. Whoever we used to be in another life, I'm me now, and you're you. That's all there is to it. Velvet. That's true. Aizen said that not all Malakim are humans who have been reborn, right? Does that mean they could be reincarnations of birds or fish or beasts? That's not, 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 not true! So, if a boy was a dog in a past life, that wouldn't make him part of the dog's family now. Yeah. I'm me, I guess. But you're Velvet's cute little pup, aren't ya? Mogilu. Be careful. I bite. Oh, have mercy! I take it all back, just don't bite me! Rebirth is like the Earth in Historia. You're simply built on a larger foundation. But that's not special. Everyone's lives are founded on the past. So, I'm just me. Yep, you're you and no one else. You're Fee. Hey, first mate. Who is that horned demon with the old man? I don't know. I thought I felt something different about him. If only for just a moment. Did you feel it too? I said, I don't know. I see. You're impossible, you know that? We've come across him before, but we never really fought him. My guess is Melchior is controlling him with some sort of illusion. I see. Then it's probably good you didn't fight. A straight battle against him wouldn't be an easy thing. How do you know that? Intuition. I have a nose for these things. There's something fishy about him. That scar on his face. It couldn't be. What's the matter, Aizen? You've gone pale. Forget it. It's nothing. We need to get out of here. Let's go. I came here by ship. It's anchored by the southeast beach. 